Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you once again for joining us this week and today for the virtual New York City Expo that's been happening since the other day. It's been a fun week so far. I've moderated a, a session. Kathy Hobbs has moderated a session. We're going to talk a little bit about that later. Uh, with me, uh, with I mean, our session today is really going to be about the future of networking and how it's going to look up in the future. Things have changed. Digital has increased our availability. Uh, with me today is Anthony Kazassis. He's the owner and director of the New York City Network Group. Julie Duquette is the managing director of the same New York City uh, Networking Group. And Kathy Hobbs, Kathy Hobbs, an award-winning TV host and interior designer and owner of Design Recipes. So she's uh, going to give us some insight as well. You know, networking is not only about, you know, trading information, but it's also serves as an avenue to create long-term relationships with mutual benefits, okay? None of us are in this, you know, uh, alone. We want to see what we can do for each other. Forbes says, though, the importance of the saying, no man is an island, has been proved to be the reason why many of us need to make a collective effort in a bid to achieve professional success. For many individuals that have succeeded in their career, the causes have largely been contributed to the strong networking channels that they have created over time. Uh, but the question of who you network with and their relevance to your career matters more. So if you don't have to network with everybody, you just kind of hone it into the people who you feel are in your sphere, in your orbit, and could potentially help you uh, advance and where you can help them advance. The experts with me today will share some of the reasons why networking should be an essential as, uh, aspect if you are truly wanting to build your career and find the success of your dreams. You know, again, as we just said a minute ago, you can't do this alone. And if you network properly, uh, it will work. Anthony, I want to start with you. First question. So I moderated, moderated a great uh, webinar yesterday. Uh, is this the new norm for your firm? I mean, are you going now more into a digital virtual uh, arena than the live on the scene uh, situation that you know Kathy and I certainly have known for years at the expo, for example. What do you what what are your plans going forward for the future? Uh, yeah, thanks, Vince. Uh, yes, this is the new norm. <laughs> we we have to adjust. We have to reinvent the wheel. Um, you know, it's something that we we love those live shows. I mean, I as a networker lived uh, for these live shows. Okay. Um, I remember when I was little and I was, I was, I was attending these events. It was great for me. I loved attending these events. Then I became an exhibitor. That was the next thrill of setting up a booth. Okay. Bring in my promotional items, bring in my, uh, my marketing materials, candies, chocolates, raffles, just getting that business card and coming back to the office and saying, look, I got about 500 business cards. And I was really excited to show everybody else that it works. Networking works. You got to get out there and you got to work. Um, it, it's, it's a great thing. It's a great thing to have fun and work. So that's why I really dived into it a little bit more. And I used to be in a title business. I used to also be in the mortgage business. And then I jumped in as, as an event planner because I, I really love going to these trade shows. Go to a hotel, <laughs> you meet some people, you network, you go to these parties. Uh, it's a great life. It, it, it really is a great life and you're enjoying it and you're having fun with it. So, so whether or not we, we, we all love going to the ICSC, the triple play, the buildings, uh, the buildings, uh, co I'm sorry, condo co-op buildings, New York, the black tie revenue event. Oh my God. And of course, our event, the NYC Real Estate Expo, we all miss them dearly. In my case, it's my livelihood. In your case, yours and Kathy, um, obviously, it's meeting your your next client, hopefully. So, it, it, and also, it, it was great for you guys because you guys were prizes. You guys were like so, like we we loved you so much because Vince, you were moderating panels, and Kathy was an extreme. Well, Kathy's Kathy. Everybody knows Kathy from HG, H. What is it? HGAR. HGTV Design Star. I'm, I'm so scared. I'm so. I'm yeah. so sorry, Kathy, but whenever I see you on TV, I get so excited. I go, there's Kathy. <laughs> I'm, all, I'm always screaming, saying, there's Kathy. I know Kathy. So again, it, it was such an honor to have Kathy and Vince 
Michael Stoller, people like that at our shows. It just made it so valuable. It made us so valuable. Um, I'm hearing, however, some of these events are coming back in the late fall in, in, in this in the late fall in wintertime. And we'll see how that goes. I know down south, our friendly competitors are always inviting me to come down. Um, South Carolina, Florida, Texas, and they're doing live shows. Of course, they're wearing masks, they're being safe, but they're doing live shows. So we are playing with the idea about having our second event uh, down, might be called the South Carolinas or the Southern States Expo, a B2B real estate expo, national and global. And that's only if New York City is gonna give us a tough time in 2023, because right now they're saying, yeah, you can have your space. You got to, have to pay the same price for the venue price. However, it's only going to be a 450 seater. We're only going to allow you to have 150 people in there. 200 exhibitors, you can only have 70. And that's not, that's not what we really want. Down south, of course, and even Kathy gave me a brilliant idea to have it possibly in Tennessee, Nashville, Tennessee. Because again, we throughout the years, Vince, we've acquired many people throughout the state to come to New York. And those guys will follow us. It doesn't matter where we go. They'll follow us. So we're so, traveling, so a traveling roadshow. But let me ask you this. So how has, if it has, the virtual or digital sphere affected your business? Oh, is this about to get there? <laughs> okay. So, ahead. you know, I, I was just about to say that, you know, obviously the interactiveness of face-to-face -face is priceless. The handshake is priceless. We even have a famous quote that says, you know, there's no substitute to a handshake. Okay, there's no substitute. I believe in that. However, um, Vince, these live virtual um, uh, webinars are the next best thing. Okay, a lot of people are complaining. They're getting that, that zooming out blues, whatever. They're talking about too many zooms. However, yesterday, your panel, um, the first panel, um, if you've got good quant, if you got good content and you got good, you got a good panelist team, and you could talk about the facts, you could talk about the problems and the solutions. It'll be well attended. So basically, that's what we're doing. We're reinventing the wheel. We're coming out with a brand new company called GRE Connect. Now we need a little more time. We thought we we're going to be open by now. However, we'll probably be open by the summer. Everybody that did. Uh, um, logged on to this event, we'll get a free month subscription to it. Um, and that GRE Connect Now will work alongside the NYC Network Group. Mm -hmm. And what we'll be doing, Vince, and how we're going to survive is we're reaching out to all of our exhibitors and letting them know that let's do webinars, what we just did right now for these last three days. Let's spend three months and help you with a three-month webinar series. That's number one. Number two, we're going to be working on videos. And I'm going to let Julie speak about that next. Number three, we're going to do live speed networking. You, we all go to B&I's, but we see the same faces over and over every single time we go to B&I. We're going to give you that ability to go to our B&I, our speed networking, and give you different faces all the time. Um, we're going to also have something so special. And both of you guys are going to be it's going to be an honor to have you as our CEO presenters to the global world. We're going to have CEOs all around the world, developers all around the world, speak on their predictions, their outlook, their visions. So this is going to be an exciting thing for people to jump onto GRE Connect now and, uh, and, and be a part of this. Because they're going to be hearing from you, you guys, your, your brilliant minds about what, where are we going? What's happening in uh, Athens? Like, yeah, I think we had Athens, Greece, or, or you know, or, or South America, or London, or Dubai. We had so many different guys from, mm -hmm. you know, on our global international panels. That's why I was mentioning those names. But again, we'll have them, and they'll be talking, especially the New York guys that we have, all our buddies that we have, including your boss, uh, Bess Friedman from uh, Brown, Harrison, Stevens. Um, again, a lot, this will be exciting information out there that we'll be able to present. And of course, we'll have a bulletin board. We'll be offering services, discount services on products mm -hmm. and uh, CEs, coaching, speaking, uh, video services, um, you know, everything, um, uh, everything and everything, you know. So uh, that's basically what's coming down the pipeline 
with our new company, GRE Connect <clears throat> Now and NYC Network Group. Just to clarify for the listening audience out there, GRE is Global Real Estate Connect Now. So uh, that's going to be a great uh, organization. Uh, and I'm really looking forward to that. But I'm also thinking about Nashville and Tennessee. So thank you, Kathy. I'm going to throw it to Kathy Hobbs and she's going to go on. You know, I think that you brought up an interesting point, Anthony, about um, networking being your livelihood. I think it's, you know, in some ways, everyone should should see it in the same way as it being your livelihood. I mean, I'm the president of, you know, my own staging company, but I'm also the president of Me Inc. And anyone out there, regardless of what industry you're in, you have to um, network. And you know how are we doing that today? Because it's not about who you know, but who knows you. And I realized this the hard way about 10 years ago, I had had a child and I stopped going to networking events and I was on, you know, Design Star, I toured with Oprah. And then I was at the, the Rebney Deal of the Year event and, and someone came up to me, a very prominent um, uh, broker who's a friend who had gone out to dinner with her and her husband. And she said, Kathy, what are you doing these days? And I said, staging. And she said, wow, I see you do so many different things. I thought, what would you want with my $5 million listing? And it was a, it was a kick in the head to me to say, um, I need to show up and not only show up, but show up. And that means these days being present in a virtual way. And I believe that as we progress um, and, I, and things reopen, I think that virtual is here to stay in some capacity. I think that it's going to be the, the, the in-person gathering again, the cocktail, the, the, the indoor event, the gala, the conventions. But I also think that there will be a virtual way to participate in networking. And Julie, I mean, that really brings up an interesting point for you. You know, how has your business, your you know, remote um, ability as it relates to video services and the New York Real Estate Expo, how, how has that really um, progressed? And, and what do you see as the future of that as well? Well, we have so many people coming to us now and asking how can we use these remote uh, webinars and videos to promote our business and, and really communicate our brand message. And it's been a no brainer to put all this together. And it, you know, we can add any kind of footage they want. We can heavily edit these um, webinars so that they really look, uh, really look good, add music, do whatever anybody needs for their, you know, to tailor it to whatever they need. And it's, um, it's been working really well. And we've been able to provide so much content and, you know, for us and for everyone else. So it's, uh, it's really looking good. I think the remote camera work is going to be the way to go. I think it's going to be the way to go also because you're going to have to present yourself um, digitally and virtually. Um, and that really is going to be achieved through video. And mm -hmm. what you also bring up is that if someone is, is creating content, really a library of content, you know, the key is to, is, to, is to chop it up in different ways. The webinar becomes a podcast, becomes a blog post. Exactly. Becomes, you know, a social media. There's a transcript to everything. We can even write articles. We can do anything with it. You can put it out to any media, press releases, anything you want. It works great. Vince, what are you seeing as far as, you know, how real estate agents have had to evolve um, with, with the current state of, of, of how you present real estate and how buyers shop and how sellers are selling? Yeah, that's a very good question. And I think we have evolved over the last year through pandemic in a very interesting way. You know, uh, video was always out there. Uh, 3D uh, presentations of properties was always out there, but I think over the last year, it became a lot more useful uh, because we were locked down in our industry for about three and a half months and we couldn't leave our house to show a property. So of course, you know, even though sellers didn't want people in their homes, they still wanted us to find creative ways to showcase, you know, their properties. So videos again became uh, pretty much the staple as did 3D. Now, 
a year later, you know, we're still not out of this successfully, but we are uh, absolutely still. And in fact, people are still emailing saying, hey, you know, before I come on site, uh, do you have a video to show me so I can determine whether I want to continue with an appointment or not? You know, a year ago, that didn't happen. Everybody would run out uh, to see a property. You know, we can't do open houses like we used to. They are now only by appointment. Uh, you know, when you try and pinpoint people down to an appointment for anything, it generally doesn't work. They want to be willy nilly. They want to just say, I'm going to go to brunch. I may stop at this open house. I may stop at that. But what they are doing is asking us to send them a video or a 3D tour, which is great because they're at least getting the opportunity in, in, in the privacy of their own home to evaluate uh, a property that they're looking at and whether they like it or not. I think also, you know, we as uh, real estate professionals have learned a lot through this pandemic in that you can't take anything for granted. You know, the world can stop in a minute on a dime as we all saw that, you know, a year ago. So I think I can speak for myself, whether it's new development projects I'm working on or my resale business, I think I've learned to listen better. I've learned to process better. Uh, and I think that's making me a, a, a better real estate agent, believe it or not, after 19 years in this business, because I think everybody has different expectations. And I think that the digital world, the Zoom world, I mean, you know, I'm Zooming with clients uh, instead of pitching their exclusive in person, I'm Zooming with them if they feel more comfortable to do that. Or we're doing more phone conversations if they feel more comfortable to do that. So I see the, the you know, business, you know, is, is also picking up greatly, but I'm seeing that those of us who embraced our new world are, are finding it actually easier to conduct business. Uh, and I think a little more efficiently. And again, you know, one of the, the takeaways for me, as I said before, is I think we've learned or we are learning how to listen a lot better than we used to. You know, we're all on fire or our hair is always on fire. We're always running around here and there, as you said earlier, in several meetings at once. Now we're kind of honed in to really pay attention. And I think it's a good thing. But I also think that, you know, as we as we move on in this industry and, and the world gets better, I think we're all going to be better. Well, hey, I Vince. think that, um, you know, Anthony, if I may, do I have time to? You sure do. I, you know, I, I entered um, television in 1990. So I'm dating myself a little bit. And what also I saw for the first time in 1990 was um, a cell phone being used. I remember I was um, in college at the University of Southern California and someone was holding up a, a cell phone. And I was like, oh my God, because I just was used to a phone in a car. That was a shift. That was a shift from uh, you know, a, a, a car phone to a mobile phone to now very few people have, you know, quote, landlines. I think that we've gone through a societal shift as it relates to virtual technology, the desire for people to want to meet in, in, in person and virtually. And maybe it's an expansion of how we network. Um, and maybe there will be um, a future where we'll, you'll have that participation either in person at the New York Real Estate Expo, at the Hilton that we all love, or you can attend the same exact event um, as, a, as, a, as a walkthrough, as a virtual participant. Um, I do think that the future is video. I've always said that about television as someone who's been in television for, for over 25 years, you know, how you, you view um, a property visually through television as opposed to on a flat page, like a print ad. And I think that that, that really is the direction. Video and virtual with uh, in-person experience, that hybrid, I think will be really the future of networking. Yeah, Kathy, I, I, right. I mean, Some of the video yeah. and, and 3D, you could do a Zoom call, show that, yep. and also do the presentation aside. Yeah. Sorry, Anthony, go ahead. No, that's right. No, I was just saying, I've, I've actually seen a hologram type of an event I mean, that's, that, that just blows my mind. So you're 1,000% right, because we're going to move fast in this direction, and you're going to see this little trade show right in front of your face as a hologram. <laughs> so I've seen some stuff like I, I, I can't put my finger on it, and I like saying, I can't believe this is coming. So you're right, Kathy. I mean, there, there's, I mean we're going to have both options. We're going to have a live show mm -hmm. for the the networking junkies like me and some other people. And then we're going to have the virtual and just try to improve upon that virtual 
for the cautious people, the people that are just too busy to get out there, the people that don't want to travel. I mean, the virtual is, and we're going to do both of that moving forward. Julie well, and I. The virtual also talk about provides on-demand educational. Oh yeah, on-demand anytime. Cannot beat that. Uh, I must right. have gotten about two hundred emails saying send me the video. I couldn't make it. Send it to me, and so we are going to do that. Hey, before we go, because I <laughs> this thing went really fast. Vince, what's the status of your podcast? I mean, what's going on with Good Morning New York Real Estate with Vince? Talk about a little bit about that. Uh, yeah, that's uh, almost, uh, no, actually this month it's seven years running. Yeah, we've had a little bit of ago. a break. Seven years ago. We've had a little bit of a break because of the COVID pandemic. Uh, and as I was saying, I think off air, uh, we haven't been in the studio behind me uh, for the year, past year. We've been doing it virtually and we've been doing it uh, on Zoom. So I get to see my panel members in front of me uh, as we speak versus having to be in the studio. Um, you know, I started this seven years ago because I thought, first of all, I was recruited to do it. I had no idea, you know, I, I didn't even know how to spell the word podcast. Uh, and when the executive producer called me and said, do you want to do a podcast? I said, okay, fine. So what the hell is that? Literally. And so Fast forward, we got over that hump and I said, okay, I'll give it a shot. I thought about it from a networking perspective, obviously. Uh, you know, I come from the age where you watch all these million dollar listing, you know, agents running around the world, showing off their properties, having big parties and getting big business as a result. So of course a radio slash podcast show is not like a television show, but to my surprise, you know, it has grown from, you know, I always say an audience of zero show one to about 43, 44,000 listeners per week, globally around the world. Uh, it's a global show. The, the Voice America Network that I'm, I work with is uh, around the world. So that has brought me attention. That has brought me uh, inquiries on my properties. Uh, people, I just got an email the other day saying, hey, I just wanted to let you know that I'm an avid listener of your show for the past five years. As a result, my wife and I made the decision to move to New York City and we want to thank you for that, because if it wasn't for all the updates and the information on the real estate business, I we wouldn't even know where to begin. So, from a networking perspective, I you know there are lots of great ways uh, to get out there and get your message out there and get some back. But I thought let's give this a shot. So, it's worked. I also enjoy doing it. I studied broadcasting and communications in college many moons ago. Um, I never had the opportunity. I always wanted to be a Kathy Hobbs, never had that opportunity. So this is my little world of, you know, communicating and broadcasting. Uh, it's been fun, but from a networking perspective, it's really paid off. Well, you're great at it, Vince. You're a natural. Thank you. know, you. guys, I like to conclude. Uh, we have about seven more minutes. So I'd like to have Kathy just tell us about your predictions and what you're thinking of and what you're doing. Are you staying in touch with the crew? the team at, uh, you know, HGTV, are you, what are you doing, Kathy? So well, talk us more about you. Let's, let's uh, so I was on, a, you know, Design Star, which is a reality uh, TV show competition. My, my main business, my bread and butter is owning Kathy Hobbs Design Recipes, which is a real estate staging and styling company. Um, and essentially, you know, we have grown, we have blossomed. One of the, the aspects out of the pandemic was, you know, will people buy? Will people transact? Will people invest in staging? And I have been pleasantly surprised to see that um, people are, are believing in New York um, to transact. And so we are book solid for the, the rest of the month. And, and as we look forward, I think that all of us can be encouraged by mm -hmm. the, um, the influx of activity as it relates to the residential real estate market in New York. Um, I think that that's all good. And I think what we'll see is uh, in the fall, especially, I think potentially a real return to normalcy. Um, everyone who I've talked to says that they're, they are experiencing a robust um, aspect as it relates to their business for all of us here who have an interest in real estate, New York real estate, real estate in general. I think that we can be encouraged by where the economy is going. Um, it was interesting um, to, to kind of look back a year ago with the unpredictable um, aspect of, 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 
of where we were, were headed. Everyone knew that, that people wanted to sell, but we needed to see people buy as well. And I'm seeing that. Yeah, I, I second I, that for sure. Yeah. Very good, Kathy. Anything, uh, anything new guys in the city? I mean, I know that Julie and I both moved away from the city. What's happening in the city I and mean, what's new? I think people are coming back. You know, there have been articles in the Wall Street Journal and the New York Times about this mass exodus to the suburbs, to Florida, <clears throat> to the south, uh, the south shores, as I call it. The upstate uh, New York. And upstate New York. And I think, you know, listen, in the very beginning, we did not know. I mean, obviously, the pandemic got worse in the last several months than it was in the very beginning. But in the very beginning, no one really knew what the hell was happening. So I think those who might have been planning to leave had that reason now to leave. A lot of it had to do with kids in school, et cetera. But I think what most people have realized is as companies are starting to open up again and allow uh, people to come into their offices, they're second thinking their decision. And I'm seeing a lot of people come back, not just empty nesters that you, you know would always flock to New York City, but people who left and now wanna return, especially from the South. So as Kathy said before, you know, people are buying. You know, my my personal business in the last, I'd say, five to six weeks, I don't have a minute in the day to breathe, let alone, you know, have a, a sandwich or, or, or anything. I mean, it's been unbelievable. No complaints. I mean, it's all good. But uh, that's a testament, I think, to, you know, our commitment to the city and to our wanting our town. I call it my town. This is my town to get back to where it was and to stay where it belongs. And we um, will. Do you guys know any, any good networking events coming up? Uh, it, whether they're outdoors or indoors? I think that, you know, I am seeing some, some events um, going onto the calendar, but they're going onto the calendar for late summer in the fall, mm -hmm. um, as opposed to immediately right mm -hmm. now. I think that some people are hedging, you know, just saying, let's just put it down. And let's see what happens. Let's see if, what happens. If, if you can't do it, you can't do it. But I'm seeing exactly. events really going onto the calendars for the fall, late summer, as, a, as opposed to right now. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, I think that everyone wants to meet again. I think that it's a, it's a way that we can all grow our businesses, stay connected. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, real estate is... Um, about transactions. It's about, you know, it, it's a really robust uh, industry for networking. It's trust building that happens when we all meet each other. Uh, if we can't do it in person, then virtually that still is relationship building, but I'm seeing events going on the calendar more in the fall. Same here, Kathy. I'm yeah. seeing actually, I, I actually see three events that we tend to go to the National Association of Realtors. The commercial division is coming to the Marriott Marquis in September. And then the one I usually go down to, to AC is called the MBA. It's a mortgage banker and that's at the Hard Rock Cafe and that's in October. And then we haven't heard yet, but they're playing with the idea of opening uh, the triple play that's in December. And that's down in Atlantic City as well. These are mainly real estate events. And I haven't heard yet about the ICSC. Uh, but again, we're, we're getting ready to play with the idea of trying to get back into the city in 2022, fall of 2022. And we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Well, I'll see you there, Anthony. And yeah. I'll see you hopefully before then. And I'll hopefully yes. see everyone who's on today. Uh, yes. Yeah. Hey, guys, I know that there's some Q&A and some questions and some chats. I will be putting out Kathy's info and Vince's info, as well as mine and Julie's, to everyone. I want to thank everybody for coming on board. We are going to be coming back, and we definitely have uh, Romer DeBoss, Evolution of Real Estate Agent and Broker Training, launch of the New York Real Estate Center, and they offer CEs to a lot of the real estate brokers and agents. So we will be back in about 10 minutes, but again, Kathy, uh, an honor, and of course, Vince, uh, my number one <laughs> hosts and uh, moderators. Uh, thank you for joining us. And thank you for joining uh, Julie and I. It's my been a pleasure. pleasure. Thanks, guys. Thank miss you both. Thank you so yeah, much. Yeah, we miss you both. We do miss you both. Bye-bye, guys. Bye-bye.